Good morning. Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning, John. Our first hymn this morning is 680, which everybody should know. It's one that we sing often. And uh, feel free to mute yourselves, and then you can sing along with Wiz. <laughs> Welcome to this 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Our service today is Daily Morning Prayer Rite 1, which begins on page 40 of the Book of Common Prayer. If you do not have a prayer book, you can find it at bcponline.org. Click on the Daily Office and then click on Morning Prayer Rite 1. Our readings for this morning can be found at lectionarypage.net. Again, our service this morning is Daily Morning Prayer Rite 1, beginning on page 40 of the prayer book. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me, and bring me unto thy holy hill, and to thy dwelling. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God, saying together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the vices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things that we and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The antiphon for this morning. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O oh, come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Vanity. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. 
O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 1, found on page 585 of the prayer book or in your bulletins. Again, Psalm 1, found on page 585. Let us say the Psalm together. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus, uh, uh, chapters 19, verses 1 through 2 and 15 through 18. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I the Lord your God am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial, partial to the poor or defer to the great. With, judge, with justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur you. Uh, you shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 2, a song of praise. Canticle 2. Blessed are thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths, and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praised and exalted above all forever. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, beginning at 34th verse. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, this is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, 
How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If at first you do not succeed, try again. Something like this was probably running through the minds of the Pharisees today as they approached Jesus and asked him this question to test him, to trap him. The stir Jesus has created since entering Jerusalem during his final week has been quite disturbing to the religious and political authorities of the day. The Pharisees and their disciples, the scribes, the Herodians, the Sadducees. Jesus has challenged their power and authority, compared them to the unfaithful and violent characters in some of his recent parables, and has his support and admiration of the people. These powers in Jerusalem are doing what they can to not just make the people's faith in him disintegrate, but to turn the people against him. They have come to him asking him all sorts of questions on both religious and political matters in hopes of using something he says against them, thereby showing him to the people to be at odds with the Jewish faith and the God of Israel, and if nothing else, against Roman rule, thus allowing them to ask the Roman authorities to do away with him. We heard last week how they asked him both a religiously and politically charged question regarding taxes given to Rome, and if it is lawful for the Jewish people to pay the tax. Jesus answered their question, and in a way which they could find no fault. After which, a member of a group known as the Sadducees, those who follow only the Torah and do not believe in the resurrection, approach him, and in an account we will hear next year, question him on marriage and the resurrection. We hear today how Jesus silenced them as well. So now the Pharisees confront him and ask him a seemingly innocent question. Yet as with the other questions he has been asked, this too was asked with malice. As Matthew tells us, this was not a mere question, but a test. The lawyer, a member of the Pharisees, comes before Jesus and puts to him a question concerning the Torah, the sacred Jewish law. A lawyer of this sort in Jesus' time would be someone fully versed in the Torah. On the surface, his question, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest, seems to be a question of validity. And although asked with enmity, it is actually a quite wonderful question because the people and us are given an opportunity to again hear Jesus's interpretation of the law. He has already mentioned several times how he has come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. However, the Pharisees have no interest in hearing his answer aside from trying to find some fault with it. The Pharisees see Jesus as a rule breaker and a blasphemer. They have questioned him on why he and his disciples work on the Sabbath. They have grumbled against his associating with sinners, breaking bread with tax collectors and prostitutes, proclaiming forgiveness of sins, which they see as blasphemous, as only God can forgive sins. Jesus is, of course, not a rule breaker or a blasphemer. And in all these cases, among others, show how he is doing God's will and how we are to do the same. But Jesus' teachings do not interest them. And in the hopes he will say something contrary to the law 
or denigrating the law in some way. They ask him this question, and he again answers them. And with the answer, they were hoping that he would not give. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments hang on the law and the prophets. Coming to the end of this section today, outlining some of the confrontations Jesus has with the religious and political authorities in Jerusalem. You may pause for a moment and become a little disturbed as we remember how these accounts show the tremendous fear and anger of the authorities towards Jesus. How his answers to their questions probably only magnified these feelings and how eventually they were successful in turning the people against him and Jesus was crucified. Yet there is a silver lining for us within these accounts. Each time they ask Jesus a question in order to trap him, not only does he evade their trap and answer it, but he uses their questions, questions filled with malice, as instruments by which he continues his ministry and his teaching among and to the people. And this continues today. Jesus, throughout his ministry, most notably in Matthew's gospel account, stressed the grace of loving our neighbor as ourself. For Jesus, neighbor includes everyone, including those we do not get along with, and even those we consider our enemies. Jesus uses the term love today and loving our enemies, those who wish to do us harm, those who have done us harm, those who have injured us, or someone we love, loving them as ourselves is so very, very hard. This way of life was not something Jesus had come up with. It goes all the way back to the Torah, as we hear from our reading in Leviticus today. And it is a way of life preached in many other cultures and religions. We may feel following this commandment at times is not possible. We may feel Jesus, God, is being unfair asking this of us. After all, we are not God. However, in each case where Jesus brings up this way of life, this Christian tenet, he shows us different ways of how to live into this commandment. And today he links this commandment to the greatest commandment, teaching us, saying to us, we are loving our God, we are loving our neighbor, and vice versa. Showing God to be present with us in the second great commandment, as well as the first. After all these questions are put to him, Jesus asks them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? They gave him a very theological answer, which is correct. Jesus then delves deeper into their answer, and in the end, these teachers of Israel are unable to answer Jesus' question and leave him in embarrassment, shame, and probably fury. Unlike their questions, Jesus does not ask this out of malice or for some ulterior motive but to teach them and those listening about the Messiah. I think this is a wonderful question. It is a question we can and that we should ask ourselves from time to time to allow this teaching of Jesus about the great commandment given 2,000 years ago to affect our lives today.
I was on my way to a place called White Plains in New York, almost exactly six years ago to the day. The search committee in St. James was coming to hear me preach in a week. I was thinking about how I might open my sermon. All of a sudden, as I tried to merge onto the highway, this car cut me off and then wouldn't let me in. I was mad. I said things I shouldn't have, although they could not hear me. I said, time to get even, and began to speed up. I thought to myself, I will turn on all my lights and follow real close behind this car. This will annoy the other driver. And as I began to catch up to this car, the thought of what I had been thinking just before this happened about my sermon came flooding back into my mind and thereby Jesus came flooding into my mind. Hmm, I thought. Jesus would not want me to give this person a hard time, would he? I sighed deeply and eased up on the accelerator and forgot about getting revenge. What do you think about the Messiah? I feel could also be understood as, who do you say the Messiah is? The Messiah is the one who sat on a mountainside and said, do unto others whatever you would have them do to you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The Messiah is the one who said, if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments, ending with, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The Messiah is the one who said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. Who is the Messiah but the one who through his life, death, and resurrection proclaimed his love for all God's children, all humanity? Jesus wants nothing more than for us, for our lives, to be happy. For us to be happy. And for us to be a blessing to each other. One way this happens is for us to exhibit kindness in our lives. The reason we were given the Torah, the law, the reason Jesus summarized the laws we hear him do today is not for God's benefit, it's for ours. By showing forth a wonderful emotion of kindness which in this case is translated as love. Not only will it affect others in positive ways, it will affect our lives in positive ways. I was not happy with this other car when I was cut off, but in letting go of my anger, my need to get even, through realizing kindness in listening to Jesus, a feeling of peace came over me. Jesus worked in my life, which I feel is the other part of what he teaches us through these commandments today, that he, that God is always asking to be a part of our lives because God wants to be a part of our lives. Allow Jesus, God, to be part of our lives. And this can affect us when it comes to those who wish us harm or who have injured us, injured us deeply, as well as those we may consider our enemies. Feeling kindness, love towards those who injure us is very difficult. Yet anything is possible with God. Part of being in relationship with Christ, with God, is knowing in this, we are striving to have kindness 
We are doing our best to love our neighbor, all our neighbors, as ourselves. Jesus asks us to follow him as best we can. And also to remember, we will not always succeed. The disciples do not always succeed. But we see and hear in the Gospels, Jesus will never lead us astray, never abandon or condemn us, and never turn us away. For he yearns to be our companion in this journey of life. To God be glory, majesty, honor, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 602, found in the hymnal or in the bulletins. Our service continues on page 53. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together, suffrages be. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine, inher and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name forever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give unto us the increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise, make us to love that which thou dost command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Collect for Sundays. O God, who made us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee that the days to come may be spent in thy favor through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Collect for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has, safely, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A collect for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. Prayers to the people this morning are according to Form 3, beginning on page 387 of the prayer book. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Alan and Gail, our bishops, and for all bishops, priests, and ministers, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We especially pray for leaders' wisdom in leading their people during this pandemic, that there may be justice, healing, and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. 
Give to the departed eternal rest. We ask your prayers for the repose of the soul of Mary, a friend of Kelly Bennett. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For the special needs and concerns of our congregations. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of St. James. We pray for Paul, Betty, Jeff, the Damita Spence family, for Chris, Marge, Denise, Bob, Marie, Betty, Bill, Rusty, Anna, Kathy, Julie, Doug, Kimberly, Jimmy, Ed, Shirley, Rip, Jacob, Larry, Anna, Hugh, Barbara, Wayne, Victoria, Michael, Christopher, Steve, Liesel, Bill, Charlotte, and Penelope. You know their needs, dear Lord. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of all saints. For Lynn and Lori and our professors and teachers, stressed as they juggle online and safe face-to-face -face teaching. And for all of our students, especially sports teams and parents, that they begin social distancing and mask wearing to stop the spread of the virus in our area. We pray for Kristen, Herb, Karen, Kevin, and Paula, Rick, Harry, Anne, Della, Leanne, Niana's friends seeking asylum in the U.S., Oscar in Lima, Peru. We pray for our health workers, Melissa, Anne, Lillian's daughter, Sarah, Beth and Becky, and for our elders, Christine, Sally Ames, John D., Lori's Aunt Laura, and Betsy Knight. We pray for all those struggling with COVID. We pray for all healthcare workers, especially those in places where COVID-19 virus is surging and overwhelming. We give thanks for the diagnosis of Helen, of all saints, who has no cancer. For our faith communities, that we are able to come together in worship. We give thanks for all the faith communities and our diocese. Peace and O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we thy servants who now live by faith May with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to unmute yourselves and greet one another in peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Hello. Peace. Peace. Peace, Chris. Val. Peace, John. Peace. Peace. I'd like to welcome everyone once again to our worship service this morning. Just a few quick announcements. Next uh, Sunday, we will, weather permitting, temperature permitting, we will be outside again at All Saints to celebrate All Saints Day, which is one of our major feasts in the Episcopal Church. We hope everyone will be able to join us for that service. We will have Holy Communion at that service as well. Um, on uh, November 3rd, which is Election Day, at 5.30, we will have a service, a Zoom service, live Zoom service of evening prayer um, with prayers for the country and for elections on that day. Um, the Zoom link will be sent out in our newsletter and will also be sent out in an email on November 3rd. And on November 7th, which is a week, two weeks ago from yesterday, it's a Saturday, we're actually gonna do a Saturday evening service. There are some people who are not able to make our Sunday morning services, so we're going to have our service Saturday evening. It will be for the following Sunday and will be uploaded as always to um, our online so, uh, social media. We will have coffee hour on Sunday, November 8th at nine o'clock like usual, but the service will be probably at six o'clock on uh, Saturday, November 7th for everyone who wants to join us. 
And you can also, of course, join us um, when it's posted online. Let us continue our service with a general thanksgiving. Saying together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, the nine worthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, that will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise and Liz. If you could give us the um, hymn number, if you have it, because I forgot to change the hymn number from last week. It's 423. 423 in the hymnal. <laughs>